All right, so this is a video that's kind of geared towards beginners who maybe don't know the best way to structure their code or write their code. Um, if you don't know what ESLint is, I highly recommend that you learn how to use it, learn how to set it up. It's actually pretty easy. I'm gonna kind of walk you through how to do it. Now, the benefit of ESLint, uh, you might've heard the term before or prettier, is that it allows all your code base, like all the code that you write, can automatically be formatted when you click the save button in your VS Code editor or whatever editor you might be using. Secondly, if you're working on a large team that has like eight or nine developers, when all these developers are writing their own style of code and pushing that to a centralized repository, you can have a lot of mess get into your code base. You want your code to all look like it was written by the same person and using a good ESLint configuration can help achieve that. So I'm on the ESLint.org sites and I'm at the get, getting started. And over here I have like just a file that's gonna start typing some stuff in, which I probably should have had like set up beforehand. But let's just go ahead and make like a couple of functions. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just like mess up a lot of the formatting here, right? So I've seen this with beginners a lot and like they don't know how to format their code for some reason and they just mess everything up. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do something like that. And notice that when I save the file, it actually kind of auto formats a lot of this. And then also I'm gonna go ahead and turn off format on save so I can save this file. So what I'm gonna show you is you can set up ESLint or if you just wanna use something like prettier, it might be a little bit easier, but ESLint I think is more powerful and more configurable to meet your needs for your team and project. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this npm init command. And it's gonna kind of walk you through some stuff. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and say, check your syntax, find problems and enforce code styles because we want all the code to look the same. Some people might not want it to break your build if the code you know, doesn't match the certain criteria, but I think it's important. I'm gonna go ahead and pick uh, common JS. In this case, it doesn't really matter. And then you can pick if you're using React, Vue, or none of the above. Do I use TypeScript? No. Uh, where am I using this? Right now, I'm just using it with Node on the back end. So I'm gonna click Node, and I'm gonna go ahead and say, answer some questions. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, I'm using JavaScript for my config file. I wanna use spaces, and I want to use single quotes, and I'll say Unix, and yes, I need semicolons. And then it's going to ask you, do you want to install some stuff? I'm going to say yes. And it's going to ask me which, which uh, package manager, I'm going to say NPM. So that's going to install some stuff and do some things. And I'm also going to delete some random stuff. And I will do this. Just remove, like delete some semicolons. And now you see what happens. I have the ESLint plugin installed. So make sure you have that VS Code extension set up called ESLint. But when you, ha when you have that set up, you actually get a bunch of errors on your screen. And I'm also using something called error lens. Like everyone who watches my videos asks about what this is. Install this extension as well. Otherwise you're just gonna see issues at the bottom of your screen in like the little warning icon. But now any code that you write is going to be checked by this linter and it's going to verify that you're doing the things that are specified in the linter. So let's look at the ESLint config and you'll see out of the box, it has a couple of rules that you can set up. And when you kind of write your code, it's going to run over all your code base and make sure that everything is indented by four lines. Otherwise, it's going to throw an error. So this is like the format we do for rules. The first argument is either like an error. I could put warn here or I can put off. And I'll probably try to show that in a second. But if you go to the ESLint configuration, I mean, there's tons of different roles you can get set up. And if you were to just go to the rules section, you can kind of read through these. Sometimes it's good just to use an existing ESLN config and just follow what people use, but sometimes they have a bunch of stuff that you don't believe is actually good. So you don't want to actually use like, I don't know, the Airbnb ESLN or something. And it's always good to start small and then find out how you want your code to be written for your side projects or you for your team and slowly add in new rules as you know, you notice code is starting to become really dirty or uh, misaligned or inconsistent. So we kind of showed you the ESLint config. I mean, you can read through the docs to get more information on this, but the, the important part is the rules and you can go in and just set up whatever rules that you want. So I'm gonna show you how to manually update these things, but I'm also gonna show you a different approach. So you can read through here and it says name is assigned, but never used. Uh, it's also missing a semicolon here. So when you start getting these errors on your page, you can actually hover over and it'll give you a quick fix for some of these. And you can disable the rules if you want to. I don't recommend disabling the rules because you added those rules for a specific reason, right? So that you can turn off rules if you don't want to fix them at this point in time and come back and fix them later. Just want to kind of point that out. But if we just go ahead and kind of read through these things, this is saying that it expected four indentations but found two, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I like using two spaces. 
I'm gonna go ahead and just save this config file. And this will also get a bunch of errors because now this is unindented properly. So going back here, that error went away for the spacing, but notice that this one is still saying that I need to indent two spaces. So I can just go ahead and indent that one. I'd probably put that on the same line and there's probably a rule you can use for doing that. And then it's saying array is never assigned. We'll come back to this one. So missing a semicolon, make sure you add a semicolon here, add a semicolon here. Do some stuff is defined but never used. So that can help you know like if you have old code laying around that you're never using. In our case, this actually helped us find a bug because I wanted to run this function, okay? So now that error goes away as well. We get some errors with indentation. Um, expected indentation of four, but found six. So I can unindent that. This expected it to be two. Name is never used. I mean, like we could just console log name if we wanted to kind of get some feedback, uh, put a semicolon here. And then also this needs to be single quotes, okay? So that was a, you know, a lot of good feedback to make the code a little bit cleaner. And there's rules to kind of force this all to be on the one line if you wanted to. But I wanna kind of just revert everything I just did. I'm gonna revert it all and I'm gonna go back to the ugly state of the code base. I wanna show you why having ESLint setup is so important. All right, so I'll just go ahead and save the file and notice I still have a couple of like ESLint errors. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put some random errors. Now what I wanna show you is that when you are using VS Code, your editor actually is smart enough to like automatically save and fix these errors. So if you go to settings, make sure you have format on save clicked. And when you have that set up, basically it's gonna look through your ESLint file and it's gonna actually run ESLint to automatically fix your issues. So if I save this file, notice that a majority of my issues go away and the ones that I can't fix basically just get left behind. So in this case, like we don't use name, so we can go ahead and just like delete that. But yeah, this is just a really quick overview of ESLint, how you can kind of get it set up, how you might be able to configure it and add more rules. I would recommend again, like learning a little bit about the rules and trying to get it set up in a way that would like make your code more readable. Like in this example with the for loop, like that should have all been on one line. The argument for the function, like it'd be better if that was put on one line as well. But if you're a beginner, get this set up because you don't want to be wasting time trying to automatically format your code and like re-indent everything. And especially if you're trying to send your code to other people to get feedback or send your project to someone else to like collaborate on, you like you don't want them to have to waste all this time with formatting your code and like reading through your code. Just have an ESLint file at least set up so that when someone clones your project and starts reading through your files, they can just focus on the actual logic and not focus on the styling or the formatting. Anyway, if you enjoyed watching this video, uh, be sure to join my Discord if you wanna ask me questions directly or talk to a community of other people trying to learn the code. And also, uh, give me a like, whatever. Have a good day. Happy coding.